Hey beauties, good afternoon to you. So, you know, I was on the weekend, I kind of looked at TikTok a little bit and uh, I came across a particular live and, uh, you know, two persons were on their match or whatever it is for TikTok. And somebody came on and said, you need the Lord. Like they would say, repent, you need the Lord and you need Jesus. You need to give your life to the Lord and stop whatever cursing people. And let me tell you, the individual gave it to them. They said, if you were seeking God, you would not have been here. And trust me, they told him some very nice choice words, I call it. You know, not really lovely words. And I thought to myself, when Jesus was here physically on earth, there was not one occasion when he was basically, let us say, witnessing to people about the kingdom of God that he approached them with such, I call it, vitriol. And I'm talking about the so-called religious person who went on that person's TikTok post and psychologically bullied the woman using religion, using so-called Christianity, again putting a dent in the name of, not in the name of Christ, but in the name of Christianity and Christians. And I'm thinking about when he was here, Every time he dealt with people that he was ministering unto, he dealt with them with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. He was gentle, he was meek, he was mild, and he was filled with truth. And that is how he was able, well, he was demonstrating to us how he was able to encapsulate them and how to get them to look into themselves and say, you know, there is a better way to live. Even the woman who was caught in the act of adultery by herself, I have to say by herself, obviously, because I don't know where the man was. They only threw out the woman. And we see replica of that today. No matter how much a man cheats, they're not going to throw him out. They're going to throw the woman out. I didn't know she could actually commit adultery on her own. Hmm? A very strange situation. And he said, all right, guys, since you're without sin, you can, you can stone her to death. Go ahead, man. We're still under the mosaic law. Go ahead, stone her. Go ahead, go ahead, quick, 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 quick. And from the eldest to the youngest walked away. And he said, where are your accusers? You see how he was taking it from gentility to gentility to gentility. Gentility begat gentility. Gentility begets gentility. And she said, they left. And he said, I, well, since they don't accuse you, I too will not accuse you. Pretty girl, darling, you're wonderful. You're better than this. Just go on and bother with this kind of lifestyle anymore. That's how he dealt with her. He never said, you need God. I feel if you take a big stone and lick your cross head. What, what kind of thing this you into? Eh? Both you commit adultery and this and that and start to shame her, humiliate her and embarrass her. That didn't even come across his mind. When he met the woman at the well, similarly he dealt with her like that because she was almost in a similar situation basically. It's just that she was not caught in the act of adultery. She had five husbands and most of the other one, the one where she did with right now wasn't hers. And he started to tell her everything about herself. All he did was to tell her about herself. Maybe he said, sweetie, you don't know, have to do this to yourself, you know. You know, so there's a better way to live. I'm not condemning you. I have the right to. I can. But I am not going to. Because I want to show you that there is a better way. And when you come across people in like position, this is how I want you to treat them. With love, gentility, patience and kindness and compassion. The Bible says when, said when Jesus saw the multitude... He had compassion. You know how many people were in that multitude? You know what kind of people were there? Murderers, pedophiles, molesters, people who struggled with same sex, trans people, whatever you would call them. Well, they probably never the trans there. Um, liars, thieves, people who commit adultery, fornication, covetousness, bad mind, envy, jealousy. You name them. And the Bible said he had. The Bible said Jesus had compassion on the crowd. His heart was moved with tender love towards them. And you're going to go on people's posts and tell them, say, you need Jesus or whatever it is. Go find God and stop this and stop that. No, don't get me wrong. There's a time when you have to be very tough. When Jesus was very firm and what we would probably call feisty and facetious was when he was dealing with the hypocrites, the fake people. He had to call them out. You know, he knew that their, their hearts were like sepulchers, open um, graves. 
You know, when they open the grave and you see the skeleton and the muck and the, 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 the gunk and the worms and the moth and everything. That is how their hearts were. And their faces look like the beauty queens and the kings. Those were the people, the fake ones, them that Jesus um, so-called arrested verbally. He arrested them verbally. And still he did it in respect and in love. Because when you read the stories, you know, when you look at the four Gospels, even though each of them give a different account, but similar, you know, they basically said them pee pee cluck cluck behind Jesus. And he just remained calm and steady. Even when the fool fool one come and say, Yeah, my Beelzebub, chief of Satan. And Jesus said, Come here, 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 come here. Why I think critically about we, I'm going to test your comprehension skills, your critical thinking skills. Now, Satan, he hates me so much, so greatly and gravely. You think he's going to promote my kingdom for you to end up there when you leave this earth while promoting his? Does that make any sense to you? And I'm say, oh, well, all right. Yeah, true your talk. A true attack, a true attack. You make sense. What you really say is true. Uh, me, me fool fool. Yeah. And they left. That's all he did, you know. He just put it to them. He never even disrespected them. Just say, okay. I want you to think about what you've just said. Jesus dealt with people with respect. Jesus dealt with people with honor. He never condemned anyone. He never forced anyone into the kingdom. Sorry. He never ever find um, very uncanny. Not good. I use the word uncanny and uncanny not in a good way. Ways to get them into the kingdom. He never did that. He never shamed people. He never humiliated people. He never threatened people into the kingdom. He showed them an attitude and attributes and characteristics that will make them want to come into the kingdom, into the fold of Christ. That is what he did. And many Christians today, they find pleasure just like the heathens. You know, different, you know, the Bible, there's a scripture I remember reading years ago, it says you're worse than them. You know, they find uncanny, awful ways of trying to get people into the kingdom because they themselves are broken. So you feel like that is a way to break their feet, break their hands, pluck their eyes out, stuff things in their nose, gag their mouth in order to bring them into the kingdom of God. Even John the Baptist, when he was preaching, he really was preaching against a lot of the hypocrites. Even though he was very firm, you know, when they talk about how he lived like a, like how Tarzan would have lived, but a sensible man. And the reason, let me tell you something, you know, when you really examine that scripture, you know, you see that queen that made her, his, the daughter, ask for the head of John the Baptist. She couldn't get him and she lick out upon them, um, the battery lifestyle and she couldn't get him. Yes. Just because she couldn't get him. You think so she never did want him to? Eh? Nice handsome man. Because he did out there rough and thing there. Yeah, man. And because she lick out. Him lick out upon them bad lifestyle. Their debauchery. Awful. Lascivious sort of a lifestyle. The king and them and the whole of them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't try and beat people into the kingdom. Don't abuse people into the kingdom. Do not abuse and bro beat, humiliate, embarrass people into the kingdom. That is not what Jesus asked you to do. That is not what he called you to do. He never ever did that. Never. He never gave you that mandate. I don't care whether you're introverted. I do not care whether you're extroverted or some sort of averted. He never did that. Even if we have different personalities and our missions are different, they are the same. It's about kingdom building. It is about tearing down the strongholds of the devil's kingdom and the building up of Jesus Christ's kingdom. It is about kingdom building, getting people in the fold. You don't get them through hate. You don't get them through bitterness. You don't get them through your broken state, your narcissism, low self-esteem, your bitterness, your unforgiving spirit, your hate, malice, murderous heart. Bad mind and jealousy in malignant and malicious way. No, you get them there through love and compassion through the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Guys, follow me on TikTok. Subscribe to my YouTube channel.
please share this.